start with the chaos of the last thing that the new post match interview you said you had a thumping headache has that gone yet that's gone that's pl uh, plenty of paracetamol down the line so i'm i'm healthy and well good because that, that game must have i think it took it took it out of everyone really um yeah it was just very bizarre Um, i i didn't feel it was a dorky game and yet there was i don't know nine ten red card yellow cards three reds seven minutes Injury time, first half, five, second half. I just didn't feel it was that type of game. Um, it's hard enough playing with 10 men, then trying to figure out a game with 10 against 10 and then 10 against nine. It was like, it was uncharted territory. And it was, you know, we kind of had to keep checking ourselves and correcting ourselves and make sure we were watching the game properly and looking for the things that were there. It, it was, I've never practiced playing with 10 men. So I've heard coaches that do it. I've never done it. For you then, it, there's, you can't let your brain rest even for a second, can you? Uh, no, no. I mean, it's it's a constant like that anyway, but in, in there, it was almost farcical at times on the side um, without making ourselves look like we don't know what we're doing. But we're talking about multiple formations and like the, on at least two occasions, like we, we were saying like you've got, you've got your numbers wrong. Now, we're looking for certain overloads and certain gaps on where we could hold each other. Um, it was just, it, for, to me, football's a numerical game. So looking for them advantages in areas was, um, it was it was weird. I think we'll brief, briefly touch on um, the red cards. Obviously, we went, we went through it a couple of days ago. But in that second one in particular, did you ever get any more clarification about um, why he was sent off? Uh, on Conlon? No, no, I, I, I never, I, I actually never, I've never spoken to a, a referee after a game this year. It's not something I get involved in, and um, in terms of uh, with Conley and sent off for, for them, that's that's their player. So I can, you know, there's nothing to do with me. Yeah, of course, but the the one that was to do with you, you managed to, obviously, Carl getting sent off. It was good for you, I guess, to see Jordan Wright in action a little bit. Um, yes and no, no, because it means not under the circumstances. Um, Jordan's been immense for us, and um, and I, I said after try after the game, actually, you know, to, to when we spoke to the group as a whole, you know, Carl was in 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 the dressing room after the game, and as, you know, I'd said well, well done to the group, but when we spoke on Jordan, I, I made a point of 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 saying, you know, one of the reasons why Carl has been so good this year is because of how Jordan trains on a daily basis and constantly pushes and challenges him. And Carl's an outstanding keeper, a real, I think he's got an, a, a huge career ahead of him. But one of the reasons he's done so well this year is because of the pressure that Jordan, put, Jordan puts on him. So uh, we, we've got the utmost confidence in Jordan as well. He's been brilliant for us this year. Yeah, and you must be thinking about him quite a bit with um, Carl's time coming to an end shortly. Um, to actually see him get game time rather than just in training is good for you. Um. Yes, but not not in this situation. I mean, look, Carl's the number one. Uh, he's been outstanding this year, deserves his place in the team, and while he plays well, as with all the players, um, outside of rotations. Um, but, it, it, you know, Jordan's played a lot of cup games. Uh, Carl's missed a few games through injuries, now had a suspension. He's been away with England. So Jordan's had actually quite a lot of games for a... For, um, as a second uh, keeper this year, but um, we know through um, his games last year and, and seeing him on a daily basis, uh, we know his qualities and his capabilities. We'll move on a little bit. I know this is obviously your first season with the club, but when you started, were you looking at certain goals um, in terms of you're going to finish the season in, in a higher points total than last season? Was that one of your goals going forward? No, no not at all, uh, because I never compare myself to anybody else. I never compared the team or the club to what went before or what perhaps on a forward reflection, what might happen after. I've just always focused on on ourselves and what we're doing. And um, you know, it's it's not a competition. Whoever was manager before me, however successful or unsuccessful was, the most important thing is Lincoln being successful. Um, head coaches constantly come and go, players come and go. Um, directors will come and go, but the club will always be a constant. So it was always about Lincoln, Lincoln City Football Club, and nothing else. Yeah, of course. And so in the, we'll just look at the next five games. Then, other than win, what what's your aims for the next five games till the end of the season? Um, do you know what, Beth? Apologies. Some people, some people build 
have building blocks and, and look at points totals and blocks. I, I've never liked it as a player. And uh, we have constant dialogues with leadership groups and and uh, somebody that works very closely with me at the club in terms of um, those types of things. And we did discuss things like that. And it's just not me. It's not something I like doing. So um, we've, we've not put anything, we've not had any conversations around what we're going to do in terms of point wise, the next five games, because the minute we look past the next game, we're we're, we're in big trouble. Uh, if we if we take our eye off the ball or our foot off the gas, um, you know we can't afford any distractions. It has to be the next game, and I think that served me personally and the team really really well this year. Okay, we'll just focus on the next game then. Uh, Barnsley, they score a lot, but you defend well. How do you see yourself squaring up with them? Um, excellent side. Um, I think Michael's been exceptional again this year, especially when you look at what he did with Cheltenham last year, uh, where they finished in the league on a on a course per point basis. I think they were first or second, won the league the year before, playoffs the year before. So a really high level outstanding manager. Um, really weird actually this year. I, I've been to many many games watching our next opposition um, that are coming up, and they they always seem to be playing Barnsley. So I've seen a lot of Barnsley this year. And obviously we've played them twice. Uh, we've done well against them twice. We've had two good results. And we're going into a game expecting to win a game. And uh, we've got a fantastic home record. We're playing well. The club's in a good spot. The players are in a good uh, headspace as well. So it's a game we're really, really looking forward to, but very spe- respectful of, of Michael's team and the great season they've had this year. And this is something we seem to talk about a lot that, you know, you perform best against the best teams. So for you, this is this is going to be a, a positive mindset going into it. Um look, we we always remain the same in every game, Beth. Why we've done that, I actually don't think we've performed badly against the teams in the lower half. I think we've had really good results and, and some not so good, but um uh, there's no particular reason. We've approached every game with the same mindset. We focus heavily on ourselves. Um, our professionalism and our attitude and our conduct around the approach in each game has been really consistent this year. Why we've done better against teams you'd probably class as tougher games, I don't know. Um, I suppose that's the beauty of football. Absolutely. And uh, one final question for me because I really need to get out of the studio. Um, so uh, just a quick thing on Dylan Duffy. He had a great home debut and uh, in your post-match you were saying you know, his ability isn't the reason he's not been playing. So now he's shown that on the pitch as well. Will, will we see him a bit more in the final five games? Yes, I hope so. And that was always the plan. The difficulty I've had as a coach really is training and playing are two different things. But at some point, um, it's fight or flight and you have to give. And Dylan was always going to get his opportunity. Um, he's somebody we've invested in for a long time. So I think the proof is in his contract of what he think of him. He's been excellent in training. I just don't feel we've had the right opportunity in games to probably give him that. Um, but what he did on Saturday and, and what he produced and what he shown, um, we all know what he's got. It was just nice for him more than anybody um, to see it on the pitch. But he's um, he's a person, rightly so, who does not lack confidence. So we, he's got no doubt about himself. And we don't either. But I was pleased to give him that time. And as I said, and it's really important, that he got on the pitch on merit. It wasn't a cameo. He got it, We sent him on to win the game. Um, I actually spoke to him about, I'm going to say, 10 minutes into the second half. And I, and I and we gave him some key points. We talked, said, you're coming on and these are the things we need you to do. And, and he executed them fantastically. So, um, yeah, we will see. We will see more of Dylan for sure. 